Tell me, how long have you been playing music? Since I was eight years old, I started playing the clarinet. The gateway to rock and roll. <laughs> I actually told my parents we were doing band, band at school, and I said I wanted to play the cornet, and they thought I said the clarinet, and came home with the clarinet, and I was like, oh my God, like, you know. But it was cool by the time I got to high school, you know, it was me with a bunch of chicks, which worked in my favor. So, I'm cool, I love the clarinet also. But it wasn't the first choice. Uh, yeah, I was really caught up in sports. I wanted to be a baseball player and basketball and all that. Came from a small town in the South, so sports was a big, you know, that was more important than music. And at 14, I decided I wanted to write songs. So a buddy of mine had a guitar he let me borrow. And he gave me a book of, uh, it was an Elvis book that just showed the chords. And he was like, all right, just go learn the finger of the chords. And, you know, three months, just kept doing it, kept doing it. Finally, it, it just happened. And literally, I just always wanted to be a songwriter. That was it. And I appreciate it. Terry Hamilton's the one that gave me the guitar. It was really cool. My dad was a minister, so the first band was a church band. Uh, it was called Wind of Praise. And I guess I was about 15. I'd been playing for a year and was just just all about the guitar. I mean, I'd come home from school and I would practice till back then Johnny Carson was on. I can remember having a little TV and I'd watch Johnny and just keep practicing. So I got, after the first three months, I got pretty good quick, quickly, which was fun. And then after that, there really wasn't a music scene in Stockbridge, Georgia in 1981. I went to school in Boston at Berkeley just to, and that, that was eye-opening. Then you saw real players, and, you, and then I was like, whoa, whoa, let me think about this for a second. Do I really want to be a great guitarist, or do I want to try to be a songwriter? I choose songwriting because I just saw this, some of the greatest guitarists ever. It was just mind-blowing to be 18, and all of a sudden, like, oh, man. Cause once again, I just wanted to write songs. Uh, the first record I ever bought was Elton John's Greatest Hits, and I just would play the record over and over, and I saw what he wrote. Because I, I grew up in the church, so I didn't know much about, like, you know, and of course I knew Elvis and artists like that, but they didn't really write their songs. So when I saw that Elton and Bernie wrote their own songs, I was like, that's, I just want to write songs. Um, so the transition from going to a small town in Georgia up to Boston was more of a social effect than it was any, more than musical. Musical also, but like a small town boy, all of a sudden in a big city was, it was a big life lesson for me, and a good one, one that was necessary and needed. But there was a point where I knew I was getting good as a songwriter. So that was, that was a click because it took me so long to overcome, like, instead of writing bad car songs, you know, I was, I was so heavily influenced by the new wave and stuff like that that I finally just, it took about three, four, or five years before I started finding my own, you know, comfort level of how I wanted to write, write and also how I wanted to sound, I, I sound like a sound, you know, and that's, I don't know if you've heard our music, it's a little different of a voice and it took a little... It scared people at first. Hell, it scared me. It still does some nights. Um, that comfort level where you go, okay, this is what God gave me. I am as God made me. Let's go. Uh, I think they're different. I think first you have to start with the passion, then I think you have to get comfortable with your voice, and then you got to kind of find your own internal voice of how you want to write. And you take the influences, but not just just be the you know B side of the cars or Elton or anything like that. Kind of use that influence and chart, chart your own way. You know, we talk about that. I think we're seeing a little change. I have a 17 year old that is playing guitar and I've watched in his school. He had, there are more bands in his school. And I think there's a change and I was talking to some other, uh, somebody else the other night about it. Even these young kids that are uh, opening uh, King Washington and they're sharing the stage with, you know, these are young kids. I think, I think there's something bubbling under there. I think people are wanting and kids want something that's real. And I think that just comes from uh, just, I think the parents, pe people of my generation, you know, you, you go so long where you go, okay, that's cool, that's cool, because there's always different swings of style of music and things like that. But I think we've gone long enough without putting soul back in there and the realness into it. And I think we're teaching our children that. I really do. And I think they're getting it. Once they get it, you know, from the vinyl, from like going to see live bands, which is very important to me. Live music is first and foremost. Um, that's one reason I think you see a lot of these acts come from churches, because it's non-judgmental first off, but they still thrive on live music, you know, so. Uh, 
I, I think there's going to be an upswing. I really do, and I don't mean that as like some you know hopeful hippie over here. But I, I really, I'm seeing that trend. I really am. Real guitars, real instruments, real voices. Sing it, play it. You just capture in a moment. <laughs>